Hi everyone, welcome back to another week of STEM Power. Today we will be learning about mathematical patterns and shapes. The fun fact of the day is that Earth is not actually a perfect sphere. A sphere is a round 3D figure where every point on the surface is the same distance from the center. Isaac Newton proposed that the Earth is actually an oblate spheroid, which is basically a flatter sphere. We will have three activities, shape art, toothpick structures, and snowflake symmetry. For the first activity, shape art, you will learn about the role that shapes play in art and create colorful shape art of your own. You will need paper, pencils, black markers, and color utensils. Before you begin, let's talk about shapes and start thinking of ideas. In school, you have learned about many different shapes such as rectangles, squares, triangles, and more. Each of these shapes have a certain number of straight lines. Triangles have three, rectangles and squares have four, pentagons have five, hexagons have six, and so on. While we are very familiar with these types of shapes, remember that shapes can also have curved edges and don't have to be the traditional ones we've talked about. There are no limits to your creativity. For example, shapes can even overlap. If you are stuck or don't know how to start, think about where you see shapes in your everyday lives. Here are some examples of shape art. Your art can represent objects and places or even be abstract. First, with your blank piece of paper, begin by outlining shapes with a pencil. Then, go over and outline all the pencil sketches with black pen. Color in your drawings and with color utensils such as markers, crayons, or colored pencils to make them come to life. After you have finished drawing, share your drawings with the group and talk about what they represent. Hold on to your drawings to take home later and show your family and friends. The first discussion question is, where do we see shapes in our everyday lives? Shapes appear wherever we turn our eyes and form the basis of everyday objects. For examples, we see cookies, clocks, and plates in the form of circles. Beehives and stop signs are hexagons, and playing cards and crackers are rectangles. As we saw in the activity, shapes are also widely used in art. What are examples of animals whose body parts are composed of multiple shapes? What are these shapes and what do they represent? One example is a fish. Fish have eyes that are in the shape of circles, but their bodies are ovals. In addition, they typically have triangularly shaped fins that help them swim. In the second activity, toothpick sculptures, you will learn about 3D shapes by constructing your own structures. You will need paper towels, two per group, toothpicks, and either marshmallows, diced apples, grapes, or Play-Doh as connectors. First, get into groups of two to three. Each group will get one handful of toothpicks and two handfuls of connectors as well as two paper towels, one to put these materials on and another to build the structures on. Build three-dimensional structures with these materials. Your goal is to build a creative and sophisticated piece of artwork that resembles a 3D structure or piece of architecture. Try to make it as big as possible. Start by trying to replicate this shape. It is called a pyramid star, which is a cube in the middle that is surrounded by four pyramids. Break apart your first structure and create some of your own. If you're stuck, some basic shapes to start off with are tetrahedrons, prisms, pyramids, and cubes. A tetrahedron, also known as a triangular pyramid, has four triangular faces. A square pyramid, on the other hand, has a square with four sides for the base. Prisms are geometric figures whose two end faces are the same. Here are some examples of prisms. Their faces can be in the shape of a triangle, pentagon, square, rectangle, and more. Once you're done, share your structures with the class and talk about the shapes you used. The first discussion question for this activity is, what 3D shapes are used to construct buildings and structures? Rectangular prisms make up the main structure of a house, while the roof of a house can be constructed with triangular prisms. More famously, in Egypt, the Great Pyramid of Giza is in the shape of a pyramid. In addition, at Epcot in Disney World, there's a structure in the shape of a sphere. The second discussion question is, what are the different 3D shapes we see in food? 
Spheres can be found in various fruits, such as oranges and grapefruits. Blocks of cheese and ice cream sandwiches are examples of rectangular prisms. Corn on the cob and Pringle containers are in the shape of a cylinder. In the third activity, you will learn about symmetry by making your own paper snowflakes. You will need pencils, scissors, and coffee filters or paper. Before we start, let's talk about symmetry. When something is symmetrical, it is the same on both sides. For example, with a shape or object, it is symmetrical if it is exactly the same on both sides of a dividing line, also known as the line of symmetry. This line divides an object into two equal parts that have the same size and shape on both sides. For example, with a pentagon, the line of symmetry can be drawn from one of the corners down to the opposite side. Some objects can have multiple lines of symmetry. With a square, you can draw this line from one line to the other, or from one corner to the other corner. Circles, for example, have an infinite number of lines of symmetry. Now let's talk about how symmetry is seen in snowflakes. A snowflake is a flake of snow that usually has symmetry. This is because they have the same arrangement as the water molecules inside. When water crystallizes, going from liquid to solid, the molecules arrange themselves in a specific order to fill all the spaces. Also, in order to balance out their energy levels, they usually become very symmetrical. Here are some examples of snowflakes. You might notice that there are no two snowflakes that are exactly the same. Now that we have some background, let's create our own symmetrical snowflakes. You will receive two coffee filters or two pieces of paper and one pair of scissors. If you are using paper, make sure that the paper is cut into squares of approximately 8 inches by 8 inches. Fold the paper using the following steps. First, fold diagonally to make a triangle. Then, fold the triangle in half. Fold the new triangle into thirds. First, overlap the left-hand pointed corner over the triangle. Next, overlap the right-hand pointed corner over the triangle. These folds may require adjusting so that the sides match up. There should be two pointed ends at the bottom of the triangle. Ask if you need any help. This part can get tricky. Using scissors, trim off the bottom pointed ends of the triangle. If you are using coffee filters, fold them according to the following steps. Fold it directly in half so that it becomes a semicircle. Then, fold the semicircle in half. Next, fold it into thirds. Now, draw the different shapes onto the triangle with pencil. These shapes can be drawn on the edge of the triangle as well as in the middle of the triangle. If you are stuck, some examples of shapes include semicircles, triangles, and rectangles. Now, cut out the shapes you have drawn. Be careful not to cut from edge to edge. If this happens, the triangles will be cut in half and the snowflake will not turn out good. Unfold the triangle to see if it will become a perfectly symmetrical snowflake. Share your finished snowflakes with the class and notice where you see symmetry. The first discussion question is, what common shapes are symmetrical from left to right but are not symmetrical from top to bottom? Many common shapes are symmetrical one way but are not symmetrical the other. These shapes include triangles, trapezoids, arrows, and hearts. For example, when a triangle is folded from left to right, both sides have the exact same shape and size. This means that it is symmetrical. However, when a triangle is folded from top to bottom, the sides do not share the same shape. Therefore, it is not symmetrical from top to bottom. I hope you enjoyed these activities and learned more about 2D shapes, 3D shapes, and symmetry. See you next week. Bye!